Number five. Now we're getting into objects. This is where it starts to feel more creative and you get to start doing the really fun stuff. One of my favorite parts personally, this is where it really starts to tie in and like, ooh, so much is possible in this program, so much easier than it would be in real life. So let's get into it. So from our previous two videos, we've ended up here with our object on our background and this kind of white board tent that I made around everything. And right now we're still in edit mode. We're back in the layout workspace. So I'm gonna press tab to get out of edit mode. And for what we're doing next, I'm actually going to just turn off the eyeball on this uh, white card. So that's not in our way. We can always turn that back on later. And if we render it, it would still be on anyway. And actually, for the sake of just being able to see what we're doing, I'm going to turn off these lights for this viewport as well. I accidentally turned off the camera. Could turn off the camera too, but I'm turning off the spot and the area for this video. So what we're going to do now is we have this basic set and I think it would be cool if we had a fun object that our main product could be on because right now it's, it's very simple, which is not bad, but one of the things that I think is cool about Blender compared to maybe real life is I've, I've made these big interesting shapes in real life and it takes a lot of time. You're painting it, maybe hiring somebody else who knows how to actually make it. It becomes this whole thing. Then you have to store it. So in Blender, you can just make big, crazy, fun shapes and put stuff on them all day long. And it's way easier than real life. And I, I think it's like a great opportunity for people who like that, you know, just to make something cool. So we're going to do that. And I'm, I think I'm even actually going to turn off the main object as well as far as being able to see it. I'm going to go nuts and, and turn off the focus too so we have a nice area that we can work in. So we're going to go to add, left click on add, left click on mesh, and we're going to add in a cube. I know we deleted the cube in the beginning. We didn't need it the whole time until right now. So adding in a cube, I'm going to grab it, grab this blue here on the Z axis. That's it, that's a cube. And the shape that I'm thinking of making here is something like a V shape, a little, a little abstract, but kind of like a V shape. So the way that I'm going to do that is with our cube selected, I'm going to press tab to enter into edit mode. So when we enter into, so when we enter into edit mode, all of our faces are selected. We're in edge mode, everything is selected still. So I'm going to press S for scale, and you maybe know what that does from previous videos. Then I'm going to press X before I click anything so that it just scales it on the X axis. So let's say maybe something like that for now. Then, as you'll remember from the first video, I'm going to go to loop cut. So we're in edit mode, like it says up here. Then we're going to click on this for loop cut, making one loop cut in the middle. So now we have to raise up our two other sides. So I'm going to go back and click on here for move so we can just select our edges. So I'm going to select, I'm going to select this edge over here, hold down shift, and select that second edge. So the first edge is still orange because it's still selected because you held down shift and selected the second one, and then the second one shows up as white. So when both of those are correctly selected, you can grab on this blue arrow for the Z axis or press G and then Z, but I'm just going to grab onto this arrow and lift it up. You're making set elements now in Blender. You just did it. Two years ago, I didn't know how to do any of this. All right, so now I'm going to press tab to exit out of edit mode. And, and we, got, we got something that could be an interesting shape to some degree, you know, like you can press your camera, look at through the camera, it doesn't really look that cool. 
Um, you could go. You could go back to the shading viewport. Oh, the lights are turned off. You know what? Let's turn some lights back on. I'm turning my spot back on from before, turning my area back on from before. So you're seeing like a little kind of dimensional thing happen in there. So I'm going back into the layout workspace. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn back on our main Dre object as well. And so for what I'm going for here, I think that our added element is a little bit too small. So I'm going to click on it and press S for scale and just make it maybe like that big is good. I want to place our main object kind of laying on here in a way that is hopefully interesting. So, so now I'm going to grab the blue arrow for the Z axis and lift it up. And I want it to kind of be laying on there. So I'm going to press R for rotate. Then before you click anything, press Y and rotate this thing over to the side. We're getting somewhere. Move it on the X axis with the uh, red arrow. So yeah, I just want it to, to be on there in, in a way that looks kind of interesting. So be lifted up a little bit. And you know, so one thing about this versus real life is in Blender, it'll, in Blender it'll really let you just like <laughs> intersect it in a crazy way. So it's, it's on you to just get it close enough that it's sitting on there, you know, that it feels convincing. So that's on you and maybe on me, it's on us. And then, you know, there are physics and whatnot, and you could just drop it and assign physics to things so it really just sits on there. But I don't think we need to do all that for this. I'm not, I don't want to scare you yet. So right now, and I think it would be better if it wasn't just from the side. So I'm going to do R and Z to give it a little bit of an angle. Maybe R and X. Yeah, maybe something like that. And then R, Y. And then R, Z. And so that feels like, that feels like we're getting somewhere to me. I know it's not touching in the back yet, but sometimes, maybe I'll, I'll grab the arrow for the Y axis and move it forward. Another thing that you can do in Blender, like if you think that this is going to be the angle that the product looks best at, then you could just move the object behind it. You know, you don't, everything doesn't have to be as linear as it would be in real life. So one thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to find a camera angle because I think that it's hard for me to determine where this background object should be without knowing what my camera angle is going to be. So I'm going to click my camera here. And one thing I realized I didn't mention in the previous videos is you can find your camera angle while you're looking from the perspective of the camera. So I, I already know, I think I want to be kind of over here. So I'm going to grab it on the Y axis, then grab it on the X axis, the red arrow, kind of move it forward. I'm going to R for rotate. So kind of pointing over there. And then I think I want it to be kind of pointed up. So I'm going to do rotate on the X axis up and then on the Y axis up. Then I'm going to click on this old timey camera to show us the camera's view. Now, we're still at a 70 millimeter lens from the previous video. And I think that's maybe not the move here. So I'm going to click on the camera properties down here. And you have to make sure that the camera itself is selected in the collection or in the viewport, both. And then where it says 70 here, let's change that to 50 and see where we end up. Maybe 40. <laughs> so from this view, when you've clicked on the camera, you click it again, it'll go out of it. But if you left click on this camera icon over here, you can do your grab and rotate shortcuts from here and, and they'll work from this 
view. So I can do grab Z, and that'll move the whole camera on the Z axis, and you're seeing it still from that angle. So I'm going to do GX, GY, and pull back. When you're on a 45 degree angle, it starts to get a little bit annoying, but that's kind of how you have to do it. If, if you are working within those axes, you have to back up on the Y, back up on the Z, back up on the Y, or sorry, back up on the Y, back up on the X, back up on the Z, back up on the X. Another way that you could do it if you really have a specific idea of where you need to go is you can, if you press the Z axis at the top, it'll show you the overhead. So then you could just grab your camera and just move it back at a 45 degree angle. I knew I wanted it to be small motions. So for small motions, and you kind of have to see where it is to know exactly what you want it to do, I think this is a good way to do it, to just kind of, you know, G and then camera has to be selected, but G and then X, G and then Y, just do these kind of like smaller movements. So you, you can also rotate. So I'm going to, uh, with the camera selected, do R and then Z. So it rotates on the Z axis, because I want it to be relatively in the middle. You know, feel, feels reasonable. So out of curiosity, I'm going to go to the shading, shading workspace here. So that looks bad. But we're getting there. We're getting there. So what I think I'm going to go to next is go back to the layout workspace and okay. I'm going to go back to the layout workspace and I am going to I feel like our, our set object is not quite there yet. So from the camera view, you can't really tell what's going on at all. So I think I'm going to with our V-shape object selected, I'm going to press tab. And the two edges are still selected up there. I'm going to grab the, uh, the blue arrow for the Z-axis and lift it up a little bit more. I'm also going to select just this one kind of behind the object. I'm going to lift that straight up as well. We're going to press tab to exit out of there. We're going to click on the little camera thing to see where we are. I'm going to go back into the shader. I'm going to go back into the shading workspace. And then I think part of what's distracting here is the light. Yeah, that spotlight is super distracting so far. So, you know, the next thing I'm going to do to just try to make this, this basic shape feel interesting is click on the shape tab back into edit mode, then I'm going to select this bottom edge down here, and I'm going to drag it out on the X axis, because I'm just trying to create a compositional element here that moves your eye around the composition, and then now we're kind of getting into like photo theory and composition theory, but you want the viewer's eye to move around the composition, so I'm going with kind of a zigzag that the viewer's eye could be doing. And now you can also do this from the camera view. So the, the object that we made, the V object is still selected, so I'm going to press tab, and I can still press GX and kind of see what's happening from the camera view is helpful compositionally, so I'm not just guessing. So it's like, is that cool? Is that cool? Is that cool? I could just kind of like move it around, like personally, share it right there, it's cool. Then I'm going to press tab to get out of edit mode. And then go back into the shading workspace. I think, I think the lighting needs work. I think the lighting needs work for sure. And obviously, we want the background to cover this whole area. So, you know, I think that that basic background was helpful as a, as a teaching element before, but I think, I think we're just going to scrap it, honestly. So I'm going to press X and delete that whole background because 
for this scenario, I, I don't think it needs to be like that. So now I'm going to go to add plane. It gives us our little plane down there. I'm going to press S for scale, scale it up kind of big. R for rotate on the X axis. I'm going to, before you click anything, press 90 to get it at a 90 degree angle. Then I'm going to click and hold and drag the green arrow for the Y axis. Then same thing for the Z axis. I'm trying to get this thing where it needs to be relative to the camera so it can actually serve as a background. So drag it over on that axis, drag it up. Then as you can see, we're not quite there yet. So I'm going to press S for scale again with that same thing selected. And then I think it needs to move on the, on the X axis, the red axis. Still, so I'm, I'm also going to rotate it on the Z axis so that it can like fill up that space better. That feels better. So now if you go back into the shading workspace, ooh, ooh, it's like Vogue magazine. Ooh, it, fe it feels like such luxury right now. So whatever ha is happening here, personally, not my style, but you, you see how these things work and how you know, little changes can affect things. And yeah, this, this is a style that is cool. Yeah, there's, there's some cool stuff you could do for this style. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not ending here. And for the sake of my own personal style, I would not shoot it like this, but you're seeing, you're seeing what's possible right now. So now I think we can actually get into a fun universe of color.